Yeezy World. Oh, this is quite interesting, right? I saw this thread the other day on Kanye West forum. Uh, Kanye to the tur to the to the really really interesting, very very much inspiring. Do you remember when uh, Kanye was talking about building schools and all that sort of stuff, right? It all seems like kind of far fetched ideas that aren't really going to get fleshed out. Never going to see a light of day because all we have to see so far are the clothes and the shoes, right? Don't really get anything more from that. The clothes and the shoes aren't, you know, they're not um they're not just you know throwaway things because I think you know w whether we like it or not or whether someone like me who's kind of kind of steered away from listening to what Kanye has to say for the most part he has influenced quite a lot when it comes to fashion especially his iterations of the Yeezy so far that distress kind of over die um look baggy look uh distress look the trainers the simplicity of them the lack of branding has gone by and kind of um permeated through other parts in p other parts of fashion his influence is far-reaching and we can't deny that but some of the other kind of uh, more ambitious t targets or ambitious goals that he's kind of trying to put out there we haven't really seen a light of day so far we've got some kind of inkling of what he's trying to do with that theater room or is it the theater space or the cinema in chicago they're trying to renovate or he said from extension we're going to see maybe some imprint of yeezy design um practice being seen shown there we saw obviously um his um interior design for his act for their house as a family is pretty interesting too and maybe kind of goes towards least towards the minimalism aspects of how he designs or how his team designs we've seen some inclination of how he tends to kind of you know uh decimate his kind of design language throughout the world with the showroom that he has in the book that i saw featured somewhere right i, I forgot who he worked with but the sort of images of the showroom that look fucking beautiful so we've seen some bits and pieces but we haven't really seen anything of any kind of uh real real interest that will peak us so, but this thread actually did pique my interest because we saw some really interesting things that i think will be interested to see how it kind of works out in the future um it's a thread from the yeezy forum right and basically this dude found a video of one of the designers who happens to be i think russian right i think that's the, that's what the language is who works as part of the design team and he posted an entire video where the guy's kind of going through i think he's his own portfolio of the work that he's done as work as pertains to working with the yeezy team um and the, the thread titled here is, is a designer at that working on the porn hub awards with with kanye has some crazy ideas for yeezys right for Yeezy in general and it kind of goes through the entirety of the ideas that they were kind of debuting or the things that they're kind of working through and the kind of things that they were doing. Um, one interesting thing is a Yeezy Pyramid Church, which we kind of saw uh, something similar to, oh, it's for 2020, right? But we kind of saw some and it's similar iteration with his performance at Coachella, which for me was a bit strange, a bit weird coming from the church, seeing them perform in those kind of outfits on the hill, barefooted or with no shoes, sorry, uh, just singing, no preaching. It was a bit strange. It kind of felt a bit cultish again but maybe um with kanye being somebody who architects his entire life why wouldn't he think he could architect his own church of to his liking and i also have sympathy for the idea that if you're somebody of notoriety a celebrity of some sort maybe going to church or to a public church that everyone else goes to can be a bit of a drain emotionally you're there to kind of escape from the drudgery of everyday life to kind of tap into a higher power to get some kind of inner peace and then you've got people tapping in the shoulder trying to get selfies and autographs and shit and i get it can get annoying very very quickly um so maybe this is the best way to do it again um the idea of it is pretty inspiring pretty cool to see right um i think it goes there, there's a is there, is there a scripture in the bible that says a church you don't need a hall you don't need a roof or a hall it just needs I think what's the definition of a church? Like one, one of what one is it? More than four people is a church, right? Congregating together and praying. That's a basic church. You don't need a, a roof or any walls or anything. And it kind of goes against the notion of mega churches, right? With some of these guys like Crefo Dollar and um, Kenneth Copeland, these kind of people that have mega churches all over the place, right? Who's the dude that didn't let people in during the floods? So it kind of goes against that kind of thing. Obviously, there's still is a part of it that's still exclusive. They have security around them when they're doing it. I, I remember Brendan Shaw mentioning his podcast when he runs through the hills. He, he hears them playing and there's security all over the place, kind of keeping um, people out of it. So I guess that's one thing, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, I'm still on the fence with that one. Uh, then there's... Um, only one huge table and they're all soft and cozy and is that in the church huh interesting entrance structure yeah that's basically it. there's a that's easy store dressing room is in the cave which is very very interesting right um got simulators and shit so these here's him showing a picture of um a desert sort of structure with somebody sitting down on the mound and that's basically what the store is which is a very interesting way to make a store um again very experiential which could probably explain why we haven't seen a easy pop-up so far which has been interesting right 
he's kind of staying with Pop, which kind of goes to against the Kanye basically design ethos, kind of going against whatever the whatever the common notion, whatever the, the popular notion is, you'll kind of stay away from it and try and do his own thing. So the idea of having a pop up or a temporary space in the conventional way that it's done is maybe a bit cringe to him. But I like this experiential kind of nature of uh, this store. It looks very interesting too. The floor plans look very, very cool. Um, Again, everything is built into the actual um, structure. So there's a kind of a bike, uh, a fitness bike that's kind of built out of the sand that you would see from the desert. They can kind of use and kind of maybe test out your shoes. A easy re restaurant where the dishes are served on your lap. You sit down on the mound instead of being sitting on a table. So again, um, it takes away from the, it kind of democratizes um, floor plans of restaurants, right? Because some places are more lucrative than others where you sit uh there might be an idea that you know you don't need to have any reservations you can rock up and sit next to a banker next to a celebrity next to a single mum. that kind of aspect of it it's quite communal as well in that way shape or form that's pretty cool um there is a where was that um there's a span is it is it a scandinavian there's a scandinavian restaurant that does that similarly right where they all kind of sit around an open fire i don't know what it was a restaurant does something similar uh but yeah anyway that that was really cool Another slide on that one. The, here's a slide of the actual tray with a little hole in the middle of it, which is quite interesting. I guess that's the bit where you put your, la your lap on and maybe the food sits in the inside and in the outside. Going to great. Which is interesting, right? He's t basically taking uh, the food tray, something that was much be bemoaned as being the that's being the thing that broke down society right remember there was a time where people were saying that oh you need to sit around a table and get back to family values and stuff and now Kanye West is trying to basically redesign an item that was at first kind of something that you know people would say would be a, a marker that society is crumbling right that we're not kind of sharing and uh, eating ar around each other and trying to make it it's it's more of a separate and a, a bring it together and maybe this food tray kind of does both things, right? Because you can move around and sit where you want. I'm interested to see where that goes. One second. These allergies are killing me. Um, it continues on here a bit. You've got a Yeezy scooter. With wheels got made out of the same rubber from the 350s, which looks very interesting. Scooters are something that I've kind of slowly but surely come around to. Um... I'm not a fan of the scooters that people ride to the stations, right? Uh, to kind of gain an extra five minutes of sleep. I think there was a quite pathetic. See people like racing down the street with their scooters, riding them. Has anyone, have you, have you ever seen someone fall on one of them scooters that they ride to the station with? That'd be so hilarious, isn't it? Because in the morning, you're definitely not in any kind of shape or form to fall, fall over, right? You just about woke up. You've got, uh, you know, some coffee in you. You're struggling to kind of up step, keep your eyes open. You're dreading getting into work. And then imagine you're on your scooter hurtling down the street and you fucking stack, man. You're going to feel that. That shit's going to wake you the hell up, isn't it? So, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see that. But I'm kind of getting around to the idea of the electric, the, the, the electric scooters, right? The ones that Bird do. Um, there's a few other companies that are doing them now. I think the, the company that Case Nice that rides the skateboards of, electric skateboards, they've made one. I saw a, a guy, uh, I saw Sam Sheriff. Uh, reviewing one of those kind of uh, actual scooters the other day actually looked really really cool so i'm not, i actually getting around to the idea whether or not i'd actually use one for my day-to-day -day commute i'm not too sure if you look a bit a bit of a dork wearing riding those kind of things i just think of like a startup bro with his little macbook air in the back of his backpack right listening to some nondescript podcast like you know i don't know i don't know where, where, where i stand with it but again a cool idea again income all encompassing the easy world right you can imagine some of these easy employees riding those things in between um, offices so that's pretty cool right without buttons and stuff electronics is managed intuitively feels like a living creature so what well, i guess intuitively like a hoverboard right a hoverboard doesn't really have any controls you kind of lean forward lean backwards to stop and stuff so that might be something that quite would work pretty well in that regard um and do some most i think electric scooters have a throttle right on the handlebar right you just hold like a motorbike i'm assuming isn't it or maybe a button, because maybe holding that all the way through might hurt your wrist. So maybe there's a button that you kind of hold and then a button to kind of, yeah, maybe. I'm not sure how that works, but that's pretty cool. Um, this is probably the most interesting one, and maybe the one that's going to split opinion is the Yeezy Sound Buds. So on this slide, you've got a, basically an image of these earbuds that look a little bit similar to um, uh, um, noise cancellation earbuds, ones that you might use if you're working in a factory or you might use if you need to sleep and stuff, right? 
So they're orange tipped and they've got a connect a cable that links both of them on either side. And the text I think translated from the actual presentation was that uh without buttons and any manageable elements, broadcasters only easy sounds, so only stuff that's you know, within their kind of label or which I mean which means maybe Yeezy's developing an imprint under Yeezy Sounds that isn't good music. Good music is maybe an entirely different thing that Pusha T would manage and will be a little bit more traditional, a little bit more um, easy to categorize in that respect and maybe easy will be a bit more experimental so you might see stuff that we might have heard on Yeezus being deployed because you you could imagine an Aphex Twin or somebody of that kind of like of that kind of ilk releasing something under Yeezy as opposed to good music right good music is probably more in the vein of traditional hip-hop in that regard still pushing the boundaries but more e easier to classify whereas Yeezus kind of sounds like nothing else probably one of my favorite albums of Kanye and maybe my the favorite time period of Kanye too he was going he was on his full anarchist mode right fuck everything burning the whole thing down and trying to flip tables right and change things and it kind of led to where he is now at the moment now he's a bit too woke and a little bit too um, I, don't know, I, I don't know, he's a bit too, I don't know, he's just in a weird place for me at the moment, but I, I like the idea of this, I think it's interesting, I think it might, and again, um, sorry, it says, it only broadcast easy sound stuff, uh, yay once all the time, and podcast for four hours, okay, one week of noise, why not, so he will, they, they'll program what they want into the actual broadcast, and that's what everyone listens to collectively, which is interesting, because it goes back to, there's a time, there's a period in time, when OVO Radio was at its pomp, when you can't, Drake was really, really dominating. He's still dominating. No, but the period of time where I used to tune in live to hear the OVO sound uh, radio mixes because you're, you'd want to hear uh, an exclusive, right? From Drake, an exclusive from somebody under the, under the OVO camp or somebody that's related to them, right? A lot of the UK guys will send them dub plates. Some of the other US people over, uh, over time would send them exclusives too because they knew there'd be a large catchment area, people that a uh, catchment audience that want to hear that sort of thing. And it kind of got me thinking, you know what? Radio could work if the show was good enough, if it had enough of a pull, if people trusted the person speaking enough. Because nowadays I think radio doesn't work because for the most part, you have people with a huge ins inflated sense of self, right? The Paul Rosenbergs, the Ebros and stuff who really think that their opinion has any kind of weight when it doesn't. They have a program director that sits above them that dictates exactly what gets played. So you end up with a station that plays the same five or ten songs again and again and again. And DJs who have probably seen much better days, right, in terms of the funk flex and stuff. So there's no real authority. There's no real trust um, on their end in terms of their programming, which is why probably a station like Beats 1 is where we come in and really smashed it because they've got people in that people trust, right? They've kind of grabbed them from the outside, gave them a show. And for the most part, people like Soul Selection, people like that are really smashing it on that kind of station. And people listen to those two hour and a half um, mixes of, you know, new jazz and uh, new uh, neo soul and stuff. Really slow, easy, ambient kind of music that really, you know, would get boring quickly, but people listen to it. So there might be an aspect of it that would work. I know I mentioned before, but the Joe Rogan podcast, when that was live, I would stop everything and actually listen to it live in London, which, you know, is quite late at night, depending on what time they start in LA. Sometimes it could be 11 p.m. and I'll just kind of just watch it live in the background as I'm doing other things before I go to bed. So it's not that far-fetched to imagine other companies doing the same thing. Spotify deciding to make their own headsets that broadcast certain stations or playlists on their thing. Certain labels, um, imprints of a label might do that. You might be able to get an, an, an Atlantic pair of headsets a 300 pair of headsets maybe excel rec recordings might do something similar and stream some of their artists who people kind of love excel have done a good way of job doing because they've they've cultivated the roster a very um carefully hand-picked hand-selected artists right there might be an opportunity for you imagine like a jay paul who just announced he's putting out new music he might decide to stream his album um exclusively only to people that have the excel recording headsets right uh, on only for a particular set of time or even album listening parties which i think i've really odd where people stand around and just sit in front of the artist as he kind of dances to his new album that you have no context for what about having the ability to have a, 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 a global experience where everyone can partake in this kind of feedback loop in terms of what you like about the and what you don't about the idea or just a, a global listening session right that'd be pretty amazing um and maybe for just artists in general, they can maybe tap into influencers they can't exactly fly over, send them a pack of the headphones and tell them to tune in at a particular set of time and give them their thoughts and opinions on what they like and don't like about their music or get the influencer to stream it on their Instagram profile. There's so many things to do with that. But I think that's probably the most interesting thing I've seen so far in these slides. Um, and then coming on, we've got Yeezy headphones re-engineered for a new feeling of sound. Music gone make you cry. So I'm assuming they've got sensors that 
basically tap into some kind of neural pathway on your brain somewhere um which again will be very very interesting you know how freaky it is when you're listening to a song and it kind of plays a one instrument plays at 11 percent instrument from the red it really gives you a sense of atmosphere and feeling and warmth especially with shitty headphones so that might be something that might work out really good we have a easy home pod here which looks amazing it's like free tubular uh uh cylinders kind of like uh, linked to each other so if you're familiar with the beats kind of tubular um portable speakers whatever they may be called or bluetooth speakers you that kind of looks similar to that they kind of link together which is really interesting because i use my bluetooth speaker all the time if you've been to stratford and hanged out the station you'll see lots of kids using their bluetooth speakers to play music and stuff so it's something that a lot of people like and yeah in general a really interesting video um i'll link it and show you to check out it's all in russian unfortunately so you're not going to be able to understand it unless you speak the language but um a really good presentation by the dude who's a, a, a designer there going through some of the things that they kind of are trying to do as you can hear there you go strap russian there loads of things on there i think he linked all of it hasn't it is there anything else on there that i missed out Put it here, you know? yeah. yeah i think that might be it anyway i think that might be it so um i recommend you check that out use your sound um designer talking in public about the stuff that they're planning to do something very rare something i'm sure a lot of people haven't been able to see but i think these are projects we're probably going to see in the next coming years and might explain why we're getting the kanye we're getting now at the moment <laughs> i think so anyway in my opinion humbly humbly in my opinion i think that might be the case